what I realised after more than 40 years, we could look inside that charge capacitor to see what was happening. And I thought of that three years ago. And my colleague Forrest claims he thought of it many years ago and I took no notice of so. Um, so I thought of it and I bought the equipment and I didn't do the experiment. And Forrest, I spent a thousand pounds, Forrest spent hundreds of pounds, and we didn't, didn't do the experiment. Then um, Tony Wakefield in Australia, who I hadn't met for 50 years, did the experiment in a couple of days. And I watched his experiment on Skype. See, so I could watch the scope and all of And he's in Australia. And then he delivered the results of what's going on in here. Now, one way of explaining what goes on in there is that when you close the switch, half of the energy in there immediately comes out because it's already travelling at the speed of light within there. Okay? The, the charge capacitor did not have a stationary electric field. It had the same as what, what's out there when you close the switch. It had this going at the speed of light from there to there. See an open circuit, reversing and going back, and then reversing and going back. So, and this is the first, so this is a historic document which I got which you can't publish in a referee journal, in a peer review journal, um, which I, I gave to this lucky man. And there are the pictures of what we see at these points. Now what you see, and, and then you suddenly find an electronic engineer who's used a scope for years can't <coughs> sort his mind out because a scope, the base is time, not distance, you know, so everything's sort of going backwards. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm picking up this picture, which shows all four. No, no, it's the next. It's the next. All four you, points. No, no, you go, no, no. You go back to the. No, you go back to the <laughs> original. You go, you go back to my lecture. Go back to. No, lecture. wait, wait, wait. Now, there's the read the switch, and you close the switch, and out comes stuff. Now, what comes out first of all is what was going in that direction anyway. Followed by what was going, and, and this was going the wrong way. So the moment you close the switch, the energy next to the switch ran away from the new place. It's like you've got a battery and a resistor hanging on the battery, and another resistor, and you close the switch, and the energy says, "I don't want to go through there." It goes in the opposite direction. Okay, so that that is. Um, the way to look at it. That a charge capacitor does not have a stationary electric field. A charge capacitor has energy, and nothing to do with whether it's electrons and all those things, energy travelling at the speed of light, bouncing off to its end, travelling at the speed of light. Now, I've never had the chance to say this to anybody. Uh, and, by the way, at at this point, or long before it, any self-respecting electron, electron engineer can be guaranteed to not understand what I'm saying, because it's not pleasant, you know, that a charge capacitor does not have a stationary electric field, because then all hell breaks loose. But anyway, um, that is, now, that, uh, up, you close the switch, which was up there, wasn't it? And unfortunately, now it's down there. And all that energy is going to come out. But what's actually happening is that when you close the switch, half the energy goes the other way. Because that's the way it was going anyway. It doesn't know the switch has been closed. But everything's travelling at the speed of light. So you can't send messages. <coughs> and that's why it's... So, you see, the problem is, why does it come out so long after you close the switch, twice the delay down the cable. Well, because it was going that way, and it said, oh, and then it comes out. It doesn't reflect it. I've never had the opportunity to say that to an audience before, which, which in my opinion 
and I trust yours is scandalous. You know, and, and I won't be able to say it to an audience in future. And, and you need me talking. If, if I don't talk to you, this is extremely difficult. I suggest if you're looking at these things and I'm talking, it becomes very easy. Now, what you do is you go back to the original lecture, and then you go to the next one. No, no, no. There was the weapon. No, go back. Now. Oh, the link, sorry. This one. Yeah. Now, if you could. Now, at the right hand end, what you see is. Up the top is 8 volts, you see. So the switch is closed. And so we put 8, eight volts there. Yeah. Can, I, can I put it? This one. You've got 8 volts. The whole uh, 1 meter is charged with 8 volts. You close the switch. Immediately, the right hand end collapses to 4 volts. Because... Um, this. Because... The stuff that is reflecting doesn't reflect what's going on. I, I don't want to think too long about it. But if you go 25 to go <coughs> further to the left, here, it doesn't know that the switch has been closed. So it sits at 8 volts, you see. But this is the tail end of the energy. That energy was continually going like that. You close the switch. And this energy comes out. That energy goes and there's a gap behind it. Then further to the left, he doesn't know for longer. You see, now, at this point, 25%. No, uh, next, let me have that one. Now, at this point, halfway back, half a metre back. And our table wasn't one metre, so you have to draw it, it was some other level. Now, half a metre to the left, you see, um, it doesn't know the switch is closed, but this is the back end of the energy, and then it carries on, the back end of the energy that was already moving to the left. It's not easy, is it? Yeah, we would have a mixture of uh, space and time, and this yeah. is what we have to appreciate. So anyway. all these points where Effectively, scope measurement 25% along the line. Yeah, yeah we are moving uh, from the right to the left. So the change was first taking place on the right no, most point. No, the switch is closed here. You see? Yes, yeah. in now, time. In, yes. Over on the right, it immediately knows the switch is closed. Yeah. So it drops because there's no more stuff reflecting back, you see. Now I think maybe this is easier. You see, this, here, there's stuff going both ways. But then, um, <coughs> there's no more coming that way because it's left the one metre and gone down the cable, you see. So there's the gap. So the horizontal axis is time, is that correct? Sorry? Horizontal axis. It's, it's in the oscilloscope. It's in the oscilloscope. Right. And there's no time intervals on it, though. So can you give us an indication of what they are? Do they no. correlate with the speed at, of light? At the right hand end of the one meter, 25 percent towards the left. 50 yeah, that's, that's distance. But what about <coughs> the time interval? Yeah. You need to know. You need to know that your hypothesis would be that this is propagating down the transmission line, which isn't unreasonable. Yeah, we got it. That should then correlate with the time intervals. Yeah, we got all that. That's all in the article. Yeah, I think they, they, it was uh, for me in another second, I'm trying to Yeah, but can you go to the to the left hand then? You see, this one, now, at the left hand end, it doesn't know that the switch is closed for a long time. But then, the stuff coming to the, from the right, turns round and there's nothing behind it. So you lose the full 8 volts. You lose what was going this way and what was going that way. And these oscilloscope pictures are very well done, aren't they? You know, there's a bit of trouble here. 
Uh, Albert, I think your uh, article says uh, 20 nanoseconds per division. Okay. Yeah. So how does that correlate then to... No, it does correlate. I know it says so, but given that we're in a university we want some evidence. I'm sorry? Given that we're in a university we want some evidence. So you go on the web and you read this article. And it correlates. Okay. Come on. Should I answer it? Or can I go on? I'm going to have to go in a minute anyway. That's a shame. I've only got so long. Yeah, anyway. And then you go to my email reader and it goes to what you're saying. Any concerns? Goes on, you know, I'm a cat. What is it? Dot co dot uk forward slash n for Newcastle dot hq. Okay. Right. We can return back to the uh, discussion. I wanted you to see them to see that, uh, and um, it's interesting that are these easy for electronic engineers to understand, or are they difficult for electronic engineers to understand? <coughs> but but it, I suggest that once it becomes revolutionary, you know, the implications of what the electronic engineer is seeing, then, then you'll be careful to not understand it. You know, understanding it is within the paradigm. And if you move outside the paradigm, part of the protection of a paradigm that a charge capacitor has stationary in an electric field is that anyone who questions that is talking to people who suddenly have lost 90% of their neurons. Um, go on, what, what did you say? What, what no, did you I, was, say? I was just going to say that we could discuss the Wakefield experiment, I think, uh, maybe a little more oh, God, afterwards, because we are, you know, uh, how, how do you feel that it would progress further through your slides, or you prefer to focus on this experiment, because this is really something that... What about one fatal flaw, uh, or else talk about the glitch? I didn't realize it was so late. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, we What about the glitch or one fatal flaw? There are three fatal flaws in the let, let, Let's go for one fatal flaw. Okay. Then, okay. Uh, the glitch. Now, I couldn't publish, and this stuff was not. Yeah, go to the next one. Oh, sorry, okay. No, no. Yeah, the first fatal flaw is the cat question, which was asked in 1982. Um, when a TM step travels down a transmission line, guided by two conductors, at the speed of light, for the electric, so that we make it vacuum, so it goes. 300,000. Um, where does the negative charge which appears on the bottom conductor come from? Okay. Go to the next picture. Next slide. Sorry. Oh, is it the next one? And what's that one? Let's see that one first. Let's have a look. No, second. No, back to the first capital. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the factors. Now, now, further down. Oh, come on. Okay. Oh, leave it. No, we lost it. Now, you see, this logic gate is setting a five-volt step, and it travels at the speed of light. There's nothing in front of the step that's zero or false. And then this side of the step, it's true or false. There it is. Now, um, I can't read it. And I was going to ask people here what was involved in that TM step. But I'm not going to ask people, I'm going to say what is involved because now what's involved 
is, um, I know, the battery wants to send out electric current into that wire and back on this wire, or the, the, the logic end. Okay? So it succeeds in sending electric current blue, there, and there. Okay? So the first thing that's involved is electric current. The second thing is, if there's electric current there, you get magnetic field. Electric current, magnetic field. There, you see, there's nothing. <coughs> now, there's electric current, magnetic field. There's also electric field. Because what's travelling is electric field and magnetic field. And it's blind, it's going at the speed of light, doesn't know what's behind it, doesn't know what's in front of it. The tiny sliver of energy. All right? If you're standing here, the first you know that Concord is going to hit you is when it hits you because it comes faster than the speed of light. Now, um, so there are two more things. There's electric field and electric charge. Because electric field is terminated on charge. Where does this charge come from? Now the obvious idea is it comes from the battery. But, so Michael Pepper, knighted for services to physics, editor of the top Royal Society Journal, not then, was instructed to write something, he was chosen, and he said the charge can't come from there because it would have to travel at the speed of light. Now, we can't have charge traveling at the speed of light because charge has mass. And if it goes too fast, it goes into the progress. But Neil McEwen, reader in electromagnetism at Bradford University, was chosen and instructed to write. No, no, Pepper says it can't come from there. And he said it comes up from inside the conductor. That charge. This is extremely simple. This has been overlooked for a hundred years. These flaws are blatantly obvious, and none of us, including me, saw them. I didn't see them for decades. So Pepper says it comes up there to terminate the electric field. But of course Gauss says that if charge moves up and down, it doesn't terminate more electric field. Gauss is more. So Pepper, Sir Michael Pepper, neither for services of physics, End of the top rule strategy journal defied Gauss's law because he knew that the charge couldn't come from here. He didn't have to travel to speed up. Now, Neil McEwen, reading that from Anderson and Bradford University, then replaced by Nobel Prize winner Brian Josephson um, at the Josephson Junction, said, Of course, it can come from here and it doesn't have to travel to speed up. But there was contradiction between Josephson. Now, it's better to talk about a Nobel Prize winner than somebody from Bradford. And, um, <coughs> and the, the good Trinity man, you know, from my country. And that's Pepper. Now, Joseph and Pepper were in Trinity, you see. And Joseph was contradicting Pepper. And he said, what do I do? I said, go and talk to him. So he emailed me that Pepper had changed his mind. But Pepper has been in Comunicado for 30 years. He was selected and instructed to write to me. And that he wrote. That's it. So that's the first cat question. Um, where did that charge come from? And the other two more cat questions, second and third cat question, I like unto this. Um, I'm going to bed with Are there any